a 10-year-old boy is brought to the emergency department by his parents after being found unresponsive in his room. The parents report that the child had access to various household medications and cleaning supplies. He was last seen about two hours ago and they noticed some pill bottles and a half-empty bottle of antifreeze near him. He has no known allergies and no significant past medical history. On physical examination, the child is lethargic and has a Glasgow Coma Scale score of 10. His pupils are slightly dilated and his skin is warm to the touch. What initial laboratory tests would be essential to confirm a diagnosis in this patient? In this patient, key initial laboratory tests should include blood glucose to rule out hypoglycemia, which can cause altered mental status. Acetaminophen level. Since acetaminophen overdose is common in poisoning cases and requires urgent intervention, Electrolytes. To assess for anion gap metabolic acidosis and renal function. Urine toxicology screen. This can help identify common substances. Ethanol. Cocaine. Opioids. However, it's important to note. That many substances. May not be detected depending on the laboratory's screening capabilities. Serum osmolality and calculation of the osmolal gap. Since the patient had access to antifreeze, which may contain ethylene glycol, this is important for identifying alcohol or glycol poisoning. You receive the following results. What do these findings suggest? The findings suggest a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. This elevated anion gap points to potential causes, such as ingestion of toxins like methanol, ethylene glycol from the antifreeze, salicylates, or other agents. Given the presence of antifreeze, Ethylene glycol toxicity is highly suspected. Calculate the osmolal gap and interpret its significance. A serum osmolal gap, osmotic gap, may also be calculated. It is the difference between measured and calculated, estimated, osmolality results. An osmolal gap greater than 10 to 15 m osm slash kg is highly suggestive of toxic alcohol ingestion, e.g., ethylene glycol, methanol, isopropanol. In this case, a gap of 31 is concerning for ethylene glycol poisoning, which fits the clinical context of antifreeze ingestion. Which additional diagnostic tests or imaging studies could be useful in this case? Urinalysis. Look for calcium oxalate crystals, which are suggestive of ethylene glycol poisoning. Arterial blood gas with cooximetry, to assess acid base status, and detect any abnormal hemoglobins, such as carboxyhemoglobin or much hemoglobinemia. Electrocardiogram, to evaluate for any cardiac conduction abnormalities, such as QRS widening or QT prolongation, which can occur with certain toxic ingestions. Chest-slash-abdominal x-rays, though less likely in this case. Radiography could be useful, if there is concern about ingestion of radiopaque substances, such as iron or lead. The toxicology screen comes back negative. For common substances, does this rule out a toxic ingestion? Why or why not? No, a negative toxicology screen does not rule out toxic ingestion. Many toxins, 
such as ethylene glycol, methanol, or certain opioids. Fentanyl, methadone, may not be detected by standard hospital toxicology screens therefore. Clinical suspicion based on history, physical examination, and laboratory findings, such as a high anion gap metabolic acidosis, and elevated osmolal gap, is critical in guiding diagnosis and management. What is the management for suspected ethylene glycol poisoning in this child? Management of ethylene glycol poisoning includes Femepizole or ethanol To inhibit alcohol dehydrogenase Preventing the metabolism of ethylene glycol To its toxic metabolites Intravenous fluids To support circulation Sodium bicarbonate for severe acidosis Hemodialysis If there is severe acidosis, renal failure or significantly elevated ethylene glycol levels. Thiamine and pyridoxine supplementation may also be administered to promote non-toxic metabolic pathways of ethylene glycol. Timely intervention is crucial to prevent complications such as acute renal failure, seizures, or death.